it's me again. And uh, I know that everything is being filmed tonight or videoed and probably would have better results if you would concentrate maybe on the screen than on me because I am going to be moving around it uh, as we uh, move through some of this material tonight. Now, uh, we know each other and I hope that I, I can speak for you and myself when I say that we should be comfortable together. Amen. Uh, the reason I say that is, is I want to use the time that I would normally uh, use to introdu introduce myself and the material to share with you a couple of things that I wanted to share at the close of uh, the last night of the seminar this past fall. The reason I wanted to, everybody got so caught up in, in uh, dealing with their analysis and and working on what they were, but I realized we wasn't going to have the time, so I just said, well, we're going back, and I'll just put it on the front end uh, of the uh, uh, New Year's uh, seminar. L let me share these scriptures with you. Now, these first few slides are not going to be in your syllabus, okay? So you've got plenty of room to write out by uh, <coughs> uh, on your paper. So if I say anything that you feel you need or want to write down, uh, you can do that. This is from the King James Version. And uh, Paul is writing to the New Testament church and he's saying, Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building is fitly framed. Now I've got that italicized and quotation marks around because those are the two words that stick out to me in uh, this verse of Scripture. In whom all the building is fitly framed together, groweth unto an holy temple unto the Lord. Uh, I, I was trying to think of a way to introduce this, and, and the best way I can think of doing it is just maybe by way of illustration. I don't know if you can see this, how far back you can see this real good. I have no idea how old the picture or the frame is. This, this picture hangs in our office. And uh, there are a lot of times when people come in and their eyes fall on this. It's almost as if they are magnetized. And they want to talk about it. They want to know where I got it. Uh, my wife, back in the late, I asked her today, somewhere back in the late 60s, I think. She used to be a junker or an antique or whatever, whichever one. <laughs> way would be the best way to say it. And she found this. She found this at an antique shop somewhere and she brought it home and she handed it to me. And I looked at it and I started crying. And uh, <clears throat> I looked at it for a long, long time and I said, I don't know if you brought this to me or not, but I said, now that I have it, you won't ever get it back. <laughs> and I have loved this picture ever since she gave it to her. Obviously, and this is a point of my illustration, obviously we know that the picture makes the frame. However, on the other hand, the frame, which I don't know how old it is either, it complements the picture. Okay? Now, uh, why, why am I saying this? Uh, are we willing to refurbish and to renovate this freshly frame so that we can become the kingdom company that God wants to produce or to develop in us. Let's face it, Jesus Christ makes the spiritual man what it is. This body is nothing but an earthly frame that uh, surrounds the work of grace that he has done within us. And so I, as an individual, come on in, we just started. So I, as an individual, can dedicate my giftedness back to God to be used in his work and for his kingdom. And then we, as composite parts, composite simply means different areas of giftedness so that we as composite parts can come together as a single unit and move the kingdom forward in a unified effort. So, functionally, functionally, 
what does this fitly framed body look like? Okay? Let's say the church needs a prayer team. Okay? And whoever is going to be the leader of the prayer team, uh, they're obviously going to develop a plan where they work on the intercession. They're going to develop prayer groups. They're going to be organizing prayer chains, maybe prayer purposes, <coughs> holiday and special prayer events. So who are they going to be looking for, if you remember from the way we close? They're going to be looking for perceivers because per perceivers are praying people and along with exhorters and compassion people. Let's say that the church needs an educational uh, ministry, classroom teachers, Sunday school workers, youth leaders, uh, women's groups, men's groups. Uh, 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 to me, one of the, not necessarily here, but in a lot of churches we've been in, to, to me, one of the greatest overlooked groups in the church is what I call the golden agers. I don't know why every church that has a, a, a number of seniors doesn't have a golden age minister. Now, you're talking about fun. You never had fun until you spent a little bit of time with old folks. They don't have anything else to prove. They're not trying to impress anybody. They are what they are. And when they get together, they just have a good time, okay? Uh, let's say the church needs a practical ministry. That involves office help, uh, a church secretary, maintenance, kitchen help, uh, you guys are looking toward a new location and a new building. There's going to be uh, landscaping, upkeep, maintenance, all kinds of stuff. Then you're going to be looking for those task-oriented servers and even givers and administrators also because they like, they like kind of hands-on stuff, okay? Let's say the church needs a care ministry for hospital uh, uh, visitation, shut-ins, nursing homes, elderly members of the church, holiday a special occasion needs delivering lunches, making transportation available to for uh, seniors and shut-ins if they are able to come to uh, special events at the church. And and when it comes when it comes to things like nursing homes and hospital, I know everybody's the first thing pops in their mind. Brother Thrift, that, that, that's the pastor's job. That's the reason a lot of pastors burn out before their time is because people put too many expectations upon them. Okay? And uh, so a care ministry is going to look for the compassion people within the church. Givers uh, and servers also are good in, in this type of ministry. And let's say the church is uh, working on a vision and you're going to be needing, let's say, a 10-year growth plan and you're going to need maybe a capital campaign, periodic progress reports, demographic trends, uh, data analysis, inflationary adjustments, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Then you're going to look for administrators and perceivers. Number one, because administrators can get it done and perceivers can keep the spiritual perspective in check on all of this, okay? Now, when we come together, when we come together as laborers together after this fashion, two things are going to happen. The first thing that's going to happen is we're going to reach synergy. Has anybody ever heard that word? Yeah. Anybody here know what synergy means? What did, what did he say? <laughs> Where I send my bill. Where he sends his electric bill. I'll, I'll take care of him, brother. <laughs> By way of definition, uh, in, uh, synergy is the interaction of different and varying parts so that their combined effect is greater than the sum of their individual effect. Or in other words, and maybe you've heard this statement, the, the sum... Is uh, uh, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Okay? Another, another word for that in the building industry is structural integrity. I, I, I can buy into that. And, and it's through synergy, it's through uh, synergy that a church as a body, uh, well, they will achieve uh, optimum performance through yeah. shared are different involvements. The little, the little logo pretty well says it all. We are stronger together. Always have been, always will be. Now, I want to do something interesting tonight, and, and before I flash, or when I flash this next graphic on the screen, 
if you have seen this, just kind of hold your peace for those who maybe have not seen it, okay? But but I'm on and, and, and a lot of a lot of things like this in teaching, the church has not heard. The church has is not accustomed to hearing a lot of this teaching. Matter of fact, there's a lot of churches and pastors don't even believe in this. Don't even believe this is a scripture position. But uh, I I I wanna I wanna I wanna show you something tonight. Excuse me. I'm getting ahead of myself. First thing we uh, achieve is synergy. The second thing that we do is we create harmony. The word harmony meaning balance, agreement, unity. How about the word accord? They were all with one accord in one place. Singleness of effort, participation, and purpose. And the reason these scriptures are on here, if you want to jot them down, these are scriptures throughout the Bible that deal with Harmony or balance, if you please. And, and the reason I have on the bottom there, read it from the King James, read it from the Amplified, read it from the NIV, read it from the Message, read it from the Phillips, uh, read it from as many different angles so it can give you perspective on what these scriptures are really trying to say. Okay, now here while, oh, I'm sorry, did I get ahead of you? Yes, sir. I don't know if I can help this situation or not. Did I make it worse? <laughs> that would probably be better if you went back a little bit. Is that good enough? Good. You know, <laughs> you know, Psalms 133, uh, verse 3 is the scripture that says that there is the place God commands his blessings, life evermore. Yeah. And there is the place of harmony. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, y'all got it written down, girls? Well, I do, but I'm doing it. I'm almost there. Okay, now this next graphic is the one I was talking about. Those of you who have seen it or have been in another type of seminar where they used it, it's going to hold your peace until everybody has a chance to peruse it, if you would. Uh, this is what I call a paradigm challenge. First of all, we know what a paradigm is. A paradigm basically is my worldview. Your paradigm is your worldview. Your paradigm is the, is the way you see things and the filter through which you take everything in. That forms our paradigm, okay? This is what I call a paradigm challenge, okay? Now then, let me, how many of you have seen this? I see a couple of hands. Okay, now, question, what do you see? Who said the old woman? An old woman? Yeah, with a feather. I don't know. Wicked witch of the weather. Charlie said it was me. Brother Charlie said it was a picture of my wife, brother. Brother Thrift, I'm just playing the devil's advocate. Mr. Rich, he says that, Brother Pete. Okay, how many of how many of you see the old the old uh the old woman? I don't see an old woman. Okay. Can I show them what they're looking Hold at? No. I wish I had a eyes. Why does she have to be old? She's got on feathers or something. Her chin's all wrinkled. Okay, now. To ex okay, to, we're on to something here. How many of you see an old bag woman? There's several hands. How many of you see a young, classy lady? What? How many of you? I do too. Okay, now let me see. Because of the sake of time, because of the sake of time, let me see it. Uh, uh, if I can point this out just a little bit. Notice right here. Evidently, she left her teeth by, by the uh, bed table, okay? And she's got a big wrap around her head. That's her what? What's the shawl? There you go. Can, can, you, can you see my laser? Yeah. See the shawl right here? Okay. And, and right here would be her left eye. Right here would be her right eye. Right here would be the contour of her nose. And right here would be her mouth looks like it's without teeth. Okay. Okay. Now then. How many of you saw the young classy lady? Who can't see that? Who cannot see that? 
Okay, let me see. Okay, listen. Listen to me now. Think profile. Think profile. Okay? And what you're going to find here is this is going to be the ear. This is the back of her head coming down right here. Her neckline. This becomes the young classy lady's ear. And this becomes her left eye. This is a choker chain of some kind. And her chin line. And this is her chin line right here. Think, think profile and forget about this. For, forget about the shawl that's out here and think profile. She's looking away from you. Okay, I tell you, for those of you. You're looking at She's looking at Think You're profile. At that right there. See, she's looking this way. Can you see this? She's looking this way. The only difference between this and that is that has hair. Whereas the old bag lady is covered with a shawl, the young classy lady, she, her hair is kind of done up on her head. And she's got a feather in her hair. Yeah. Okay, this is what I want you to understand, okay? Actually, actually, those who saw the old bag lady, you were absolutely right. On the other hand, those of you who saw the young classy lady, you were absolutely right. This is, this is the purpose of a paradigm challenge. This simply means, and a lot of leadership teachers use this, and, and I use it on three or four different seminars. But the point is that two or more people, now this is what I'm about to say. This will give you a spiritual revelation if you'll think about it. Two or more people can look at the same thing. Each of them see something different and both be right. Whoa. That's powerful. Y'all need, we, we need to get a hold of that. Okay, just think about it. Okay, I tell you what we'll do. Because of, because of time constraints, if you want to after service, when service is over tonight, we will all. Uh, I'll put it back up there and we'll try to talk you through it, okay? It's okay. It's, now, he, here's, here's the thing, brother. Here's the thing. And this is what people don't understand. I didn't see the young, classy woman. You know how it came? Now, this is what I'm about to tell you. It came as a revelation. I was looking at him. Bam, suddenly I just saw it. Okay? I've seen stuff like this. Jesus before. Okay, now. Okay, now. How many of you get, get a good look at this guy? How many of you can see the kind of the, the zit or the pimple or the wart or whatever it is right on the nose of this image of Jesus? How many of you can see that? You can all see that? Okay, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to focus in on that wart on the tip of his nose. And if you can, without blinking, I want you just to focus in and study it intently for about 20 or 25 seconds. Okay? Don't blink unless you absolutely just have to. Stare hard right at the tip of his nose on that wart. Focus. Keep looking. Keep looking. Don't turn away. Even when, even when the graphic changes, don't turn away. Is everybody focused in? Is everybody focused in? How many of you saw it? Did you see that image form before your eyes when I changed gravity? That is the purpose of everything we do for the church and for the kingdom. <laughs> if he is not, if he is not the very focus of our attention and our passion, then it's all smoke and mirrors. And we're playing games. And you're looking at one preacher who don't like playing religious games. Amen. Paul said, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Okay, now we're basically back to where we were uh, this time last year in that my challenge in being here tonight is is to help you find yourself, to identify your inner motivations and your abilities.
That's my challenge. Now, your challenge is this, a decision. Having identified your areas of giftedness, whether they are latent or active, will you invest those abilities in the kingdom or will you retain them for your own purpose and self-interest? I can't answer that. You have to answer that. I was watching Mike Huckabee one night, and uh, he was, uh, I don't know if it was a phone interview or a live interview, but there was this guy who was a decathlon runner, and he ran it on artificial legs. And he was interviewing him. And uh, obviously, the interview went on for about 15 or, or 20 minutes, and he said, uh, uh, he talked about how his life was invested. And I'm, and I'm thinking, here's a guy with artificial legs, and it must be laborious for him to even get out on track and run, you know. And I remember Mike Huckabee asking him the question. He says, do you ever get discouraged? Do you ever get discouraged because you don't have the normal capacity as anybody else who likes to run. He says, not really, really. And this is a statement he made, and, and I thought, wow. He said, our highest form of worship is doing what God created us to do. Take that statement and bring it back into the understanding of what your giftedness is. And when we labor for the Lord in the area that he has gifted us to labor, that's the highest form of worship that we can give to him. Okay? Are we all on the same page? Okay, now we're back to where we started last year. Natural temperament introduced and defined. Okay? This is our study for the next six weeks. There are three definitions that we need to familiarize ourselves with when it comes to natural temperament. Uh, number one is all is not lost. <laughs> I tell you what, if, if you were supposed to guess at it, we would all be guessing. How's that say? <laughs> well, I'm surprised he hadn't already, just to be honest with you. But listen, as long as, as long as he's not saying anything, leave him alone. That's true. Don't, don't, don't wake a sleeping tiger. that we need to familiarize ourselves with. Natural temperament is the first one that we need to make note of. Anybody remember what natural temperament represents? Now, come on. I have more confidence in you guys than that. This is why we need you back the way you That's good. That's good. Natural Natural temperament is that combination of inborn attributes that are inter, that are subconsciously affects an individual's behavior. We all have, we all have traits. We all have quirks. We all have dispositions. We all have peculiarities. We all have idiosyncrasies. Is a good word. We all have idiosyncrasies, which. We could, exp which we would explain if we could. The problem is that we can't. And a basic understanding of natural temperament, it helps us in understanding, number one, why we do the things we do and uh, why we don't do things that we, that we don't do. Now, I asked you this question last time. I'm going to ask you a little bit different the way I asked it last time. I said, now, don't look to your right or to the left, but... but but do you notice that there are some folks sitting here around you tonight that are kind of abnormal? <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me ask you a different. Let me ask you a different way this time. How many of you have ever just thought to yourself, if you didn't say it out loud, you at least thought to yourself, you know what? If everybody thought like I thought, if everybody uh, uh, saw things the way I see them, the world would be a whole lot better place. Yeah. <laughs> now, I've been just the opposite of that, brother. <laughs> yeah, I've never thought that way. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> he is telling one. That's not math. Let me see if I can get you a better one. A better one. Better. It keeps You're sliding down. Okay, I'm fighting it. I, I am. Oh. Well, Sister Diane, <laughs> you're the only one I ever met. It's perfect, I guess. Yeah. Oh, no. Because I, mean, I never, know. Huh? I've never thought that the world would be a better place. No, because I. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I really, I don't either because I'm a, I would be afraid if everybody thought like me. <laughs> now, 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 I mean, now in my age that, that I am now, now there was a time that I probably did, but now is, I would hate for everybody, to, I need people to slow me down. Wow. <laughs> hey, the reason I didn't stand up so you all hear me. Okay, we'll work on it between. <laughs> Y'all getting all this on camera, I hope. Uh, no, this is Brother Barry's going to get you a good one. Okay, first definition that we need to familiarize ourselves with, natural temperament. The second uh, definition that we need to familiarize ourselves with is uh, modified temperament. Anybody know what modified temperament is? Do what? <laughs> modified temperament. That, that's a, that's that's a good answer. Yeah, modified temperament is what I call the real you. It's sometimes referred to as character. It's the integration. Integration. And this is basically what you were saying. It's the integration of our, uh, together with our basic beliefs, value systems, and inclinations and worldview. All right. What? What is the difference between the natural and the modified? The modified, the modified is an integration, a, a mixing. <laughs> that, that's all right. Just, yeah, just, that's all right. Uh, a mixing of your natural temperament with basic beliefs that you have adopted through the years together with your overall value system, uh, uh, raising inclinations, your worldview, political, whatever. So it is, a, it, I mean, it's a modified, it is modifying your nat what you have become modified, your natural, your natural temperament has been modified? Yes. 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 And, uh, and there's one more, and then we'll explain a little bit more. That's what I call dispositional uh, temperament, which basically is uh, it's you on display. It's uh, uh, sometimes it has been referred to as an individual's personality. Uh, wh whatever you think that it might be, dispositional temperament, it's the outward expression of our inner selves. 